One of the most common questions that I get is how you can import your data. And it's important to know how data import works because that will determine how successful or unsuccessful you are in importing the information. The first thing is uh, wherever your data is coming from, whether it's from another CRM or Outlook or just the spreadsheet you've been working on, the core component is to make sure that your spreadsheet has column headers that match with the respective fields within Ascendix. And so to illustrate, I'm going to pull up a spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet for both account and contact information commingled. And this is one of the few cases where you can have accounts and contacts on the same spreadsheet and it would import two separate records, a company record and a respective people or person at that company. And so the spreadsheet here is a guide or a template that happens to mimic all of the existing fields that would be in the um, Ascendix trial that you have. And so um, if you don't have this or, or you already are harvesting and collecting your information in a separate spreadsheet, that is fine. Just note that each of these column headers has to match what we have. If it's not an exact match, that's probably okay. You'll be prompted to, when you're doing the import, decide uh, what map, what, you know, what the column header should match in here. Um, another note that is um, just important to keep in the back of your mind is that the spreadsheet um, will have something like mobile or fa or fax. These are phone numbers, or this is an email field. And if you happen to have bad data in here, specifically in the email, if you don't have like a .com or an at, or it's just you have like a name like John instead of an, a full email address, that will probably reject because our email field um, has a verification so that it's a true and a valid. Um, email address. So just make sure that whatever you're bringing in might make sense. Example, we've got contact type and we have a bunch of options so that if you have a contact type, you'll want to make sure that it, um, or relationship type, that it matches, the values match. Um, otherwise, if you want to take a stab at importing data when you're at the main contacts list view, there is an option to import and a button to import. Click on import. And assuming you've already saved your spreadsheet as a CSV file, you'll want to click on accounts and contacts and indicate if you're adding new, if you're updating existing, which if you don't have any data in the system, then you really would be adding new. A note about this is that you'll want to make sure you match the account by the name. This occurs if you have, let's say, um, on your spreadsheet, 10, 20, 50 JLLs, but there are different people working there. Selecting this will make sure only one JLL record is created and the contacts will all roll up to that one master record. So you want to make sure that's selected. And that's pretty much it. You click CSV, you click choose your file, you select your file from wherever you have it saved, and you're at the final screen here where you will need to make sure that there is an equivalent mapping such that um, if your spreadsheet um, has a column whereby it cannot find a matching field, this is your opportunity to um, manually tell it where to go. So you could see in this case, the spreadsheet had a phone field and we have a phone field in Ascendix, but it could not find an exact match. And so when you click on um, map, then you could see that, oh, it's actually called account name in Ascendix. And that account name should point to your account column. Um, same here, contact, this is probably the name, contact name, full name that is, right? You could see a sample here. This is some of my sample data. And then the street is probably mailing street. Um, and so you can just select mailing street. So this is how you'd manually map if for whatever reason your spreadsheet column headers did not match the fields we had within Ascendix. And you would continue to do this. Um, and if you didn't do this part that I'm doing here, essentially it would not import that data. So if I just decided to not map state and zip, then the data will go in. It just will not include the state and the zip that have been there. So if I, if I do that, you'll get prompted one more time to remind you that two fields were not mapped, which were the state and the zip, six will be. And then you can click on start the import and then uh, you'll get a report that tells you how many of those succeeded, how many of those failed. If any have failed, you'll be uh, getting an email from Salesforce telling you what that reason was. And from there, we could troubleshoot to determine uh, what's going on with that information.